everybody. So ATC about those comments. Uh, so I wanted to discuss a comment in particular, and of course we can agree to disagree. No problem. I welcome it. Um, so I did the video update on the prom dress business plus my friend's experience with her shop. Okay. So here's a comment I found interesting. This person says you're and let me kind of read back up. So when we had that issue with the villa slack like on the Airbnb and someone was saying to me, oh, the peeps aren't coming. The peeps aren't coming, you know, and then they reduced the price. They start advertising on a site, um, marketing toward black consumers. So some showed up, <clears throat> uh, destroyed some furniture, stole the detergent. Uh, let's see, the shower rod broke that down. When they left an Airbnb rental on a property worth millions of dollars, it is what it is. They've had black, black people come there before, that, but they, those, those are like people that have money. But now you want the peeps to show up, and they showed up. Had to call a um a handyman because Bunquifa and her boo showed up. Never mind the fact that when you call the handyman, what normally happens with an Airbnb and everybody's different, but as a business person, we know time is money, you have to have structure. So what normally happens with an Airbnb, the person leaves, the maid service comes in, they clean up everything, and it's booked again. Gee, guess what happened with that Airbnb? Since they had to call the handyman, it took him a couple of days. They pretty much had to move a customer someplace else. It, it threw things off. Why? Because they let the wrong, the, wrong the, the hood rat came. It is what it is. Big trailer park under the four boys billy, the, tr the trash came. So a lot of people don't understand business. So it's like you have the maid comes, cleans it up, and someone's to check in the next day. Well, they can't check in the next day when stuff is messed up. And you have to call a handyman to fix things because you, you it doesn't work like that. So now that throws the books off. You could lose money. That's what I'm sorry to tell you. Most black people, especially hood people, they don't understand life is business. That's why you're messing up at it. And can I tell you anything? But hey, listen, go ahead. Suffer in poverty. I, I don't care. That's your choice. So this um, person says, your statements actually sound to me like to some degree of self-discrimination. No, it's called business preservation. It's called not letting the hood tear up your stuff. That's what it's called, business preservation, okay? Like those stores, <clears throat> all these Walmart and all that, they're not going to go bankrupt because of these hood boogers coming in, stealing and robbing. Are you kidding me? But this is how the black community always likes to coddle foolishness. And that's why it's at the bottom and it will stay there. We always coddle foolish. Well, that's what they do. That's, my, that's why people that have assets and sources, they don't want to be around you as a collective. The hood boogers. A uh, person says, I listened closely to what you were saying, looking potential clients up on Facebook. Th that is correct. Before doing business with them. Exactly, honey. And that's how, no offense, I know you're not a business person. Yes. Do you not know that companies and jobs check out your social media before they hire you? So, and, and that's okay. But I can tell you're not business oriented because people want to know who they're dealing with. They don't want to rent an Airbnb to somebody who might be selling drugs. And before you know it, here come the here come the alphabet boys. Here come the police at your Airbnb. Come on out, Cletus. Come on out, Dusty Dan. Come on out, Miho. So you're not business oriented, in my in my opinion. Okay, that's how I see, it. And, and that's okay. That that is really okay. But I'm letting you know that's how business works. When you go for a job, they don't just say, hey, well, come in here and start working. No, they want a what? Resume, application. They then want to meet with you. Why? They don't want to set anybody in. And you do understand that um, with the wrong character, something could happen. You could look up a person and they're like, oh, I'm on my fifth claim. Fifth claim. Premises liability, I got hurt for the 15th time. Who do you think is going to let them into their property as an Airbnb? Anything is like, oh my goodness, this person who might be staging. So that's the problem. You have to do your research in business. 
Why do you think sometimes in doing business, they want to meet for dinners and drinks and all that? Because they want to see how you interact. Who is your better half? Who is your partner? And as some things our people don't understand. So yes, companies all the time use Facebook before they hire people. One girl got a job offer and she went online and she started, and I got to, you know, report to this crappy job, blah, blah, blah. And guess what they did? It was, it was a fast food, by the way. They notified her that they checked her social media and since she labeled their fast food job as a crappy job, they rescinded her job offer. See, it's moves like that our people make every day. Every day, We don't even know how to move. Because people that are in business, they think differently than maybe some people that are not. They have more to lose. So yes, definitely check Facebook. Oh, definitely. Definitely check Facebook to see what you're dealing with. There was a lady, uh, a black lady had a, a home. Yeah. She should have checked Facebook, but she didn't. And she rented out to Bonquifa. Nice home, remodeled it, Bonquifa and trashed it. And then you look on her Facebook page. What the heck? Bonquifa threw a wild party, probably about 40, 50 people in that house. And oh, by the way, the pictures was on Facebook. Well, they said they didn't do it. Man, the pictures were on Facebook. So maybe she should have checked that ahead of time. And said, oh, no, this person likes wild parties. So now the money she did get from the Airbnb, it wasn't even worth it. Because guess what? That black woman I feel sorry for has to go back in and get a contractor. Holes in the walls. You can tell it was a nice home. Besides trashing it, holes in the walls. I don't know how the heck somebody said like, breaking a ceiling fan. Are you hanging from the ceiling fan? Who, who does that? Are you going to have to hire an electrician? More than likely. So people in business, they move differently. You, you have to. People in business are more calculated. They want to make calculated moves. They don't just do. So she should have checked Facebook, like I said, and I stand by it. Person says, in order to find out their race or what their background is, I said check Facebook. You can see what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Kind of get an aura of the person. You can see who it is. This person look wild and crazy. See what the person looks like. If it looks like Bonquifa, maybe change the Bonquifa uh, to her, her attire. See, that's the problem. Black folks, a lot of times, and people, especially at the bottom, economically, they, they, they just figure, well, that's just one, the cost of doing business. No, again, that's why the hood doesn't understand. The food deserts, that's what you bought. People are not just going to, well, they got to eat some food. So maybe let the store just open up and just let the food just come in, just take all the food out, and that store can keep on replenishing. Okay, maybe the people that work, they won't get paid. They can work for free. See, we always like to coddle ignorant behavior love to coddle ignorant behavior so yeah check facebook facebook companies do it all the time you wonder why you don't get the job like i tell one girl you know you want to be all uh uh spoken out and be the activist you're looking for a job may when you're not getting the job office because you know why they're checking your social media And you want to talk down about corporate America and corporate welfare and all that, but then you want the job, the job so you can eat. You want to be the activist. So maybe that's why you're not uh, go private for a while. That's why you're not maybe getting job offers. They check your social media. People do it all the time, even in business. Mm-hmm. All the time, even in business. Do you do Facebook? Uh, one and only for business reasons. But it's things like that our people don't realize and you're always caught up in a trap. So yeah, that's that, wait, what do you think a job interview is for? Why do you think that is? So someone letting you on their print is just for you to tear it up? So maybe a $5 million property, just let the Negroes just come in and do what they want. They can just tear it up and then that owner got, life doesn't work that way. That's someone's time, money, and investment. 
and you just to come along and just tear it up because you're hood rats. So yeah, check the Facebook page. You can kind of, you may be able to get an idea of the person. Companies do it all the time, and that's why the groups stay losing. Because you know what? Other people in business, they speak a whole language we do not understand, and we want to always refute it. And that's why you're at the bottom. So this here is a business move. Trust and believe. A business move. Date somebody with money. Go, go date somebody with millions of dollars. I've done it. Uh, they shouldn't do that. That kind of money, and you're going to be in their world, expo around their people. They're taking you to places and things like that. Uh, yeah, sweetie. Besides cute, go date a man worth 5 or $10 million, and you're going to see. He's going to do a background check on you and a credit check. Why the credit check? Because more than likely he's going to see what your credit score is because guess what? More than likely he's going to hand you some of his cards. And guess what? He may add you on his account. So he wants to know why is he doing that? Again, a lot of our people don't understand that. He's doing that because he wants to know, okay, uh, what's the probability of her running the cars up, which you still could. And then, you know, just whatever. Oh, then this person is responsible. It's happened to me. Yeah. But we want to stand there. Why is he doing a credit check? He not have to let you up into his world and you sitting up here with a credit score of three, dipping and dodging. He want to kind of get an idea before he adds you onto his account. That's why. But we don't understand that. He wants a background check. You're going to be in his world. He don't know if you're going to sit up or he's going to wake up one morning and a Rolex is, uh, watch is gone. He don't know you're going to steal his identity, log into his computer. He don't know if you're going to come to his home and, the, oh, no, I fell. I did a, uh, uh oh, now the person fell on your property. They fell on some kind of drink and now they're injured and now you're being sued. That's why. And that's why I think like that, my experience people I'm around and I still stand by it I still stand by it let's continue so this person says uh in order to find out their race or what their background is yep the background is so very important it says the problem with, with uh with, with the hood we just hook up with anybody with a smile the background is very important get around money and you'll find out are people that have resources people that's trying to go somewhere they want to know your background what you're about Nobody trying to be set up like old girl. She they dust the day and, and get pulled over by the cops. Uh, yeah, I'm on my first date with him. Well, he been arrested for uh, well, he got a drug charge out. No, they don't care about your first date. And it sounds like a joke. It's like you gotta be kidding me, but it's real, so it's not funny for her. But it's like, who does that? But he up there dating. First date, pulled over, drug charges. Maybe when I found about that background, I maybe would have been on that date and maybe not got embarrassed. You know what I mean? But it seems like that our people don't, don't get. So I'm just trying to help you. It says, secondly, with one of your examples you gave of reducing rental fees for vacationers, obviously it will affect the different crowds to the establishment. Yes, and, and see, that's the whole thing about it. I don't care if it was down to zero. It's still no right to come and destroy property. It's still no right to, to destroy property. This would be for any race of people. Yep, that's why you want to check him out. If it's under the floorboard, it's Billy that likes to play shoot him up and he seems rowdy. You'd be a fool to let him in that establishment. What's he going to do? I'm going to go get my boys and get that trailer. I'm going to haul this furniture up out of here tonight, man. Mama needs this. Might want to check out his Facebook page. Most black women, they would maybe they wouldn't be dead today. If they had checked out that man, and if he has a whole list of felonies, a prior domestic violence charge, maybe hadn't a day of them would be standing up breathing today. Do your research. See, when you're in business, you move a certain way. You don't just do. You think before you leap. Also, I am not that cool with the terms you refer AAS, and you don't have to be. That's okay. If Bon Quifa bothers you, this may not be the channel for you, okay? And I can respect that. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. I'm not that cool how we get so upset about how somebody labels us, but, but, but we're okay with the violence. 
We shouldn't be saying Bonquifa. Well, Bonquifa shouldn't act like a Bonquifa. Bonquifa shouldn't be in the store behaving like an idiot with her big nasty looking body on top of the fruit. Oh my gosh, despicable. We should be upset at the fact that we know how to live like people that we can't, you can't even keep a grocery store in a black neighborhood without it being robbed and being uh, uh, people that are stealing from it. We should be upset with that. So the, the names with Bonquifa, trust me, honey, you got bigger problems than Bonquifa, really and truly, than, 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 than the names I'm referring to as. Let's look at the behavior. That's why I accuse them when people like that black doctor that was like, oh, and the language that she used, oh my gosh, really? She said some stuff on, on her IG, the language that she used. But every day you listen to kill that so-and-so, kill that ninja, kill that naker, call a women bees and HOE. Anybody offended by it? No, because we buy it. We love it. We like it. What Neely Fuller say? People, black people. Man, they are silly about serious things and serious about silly things. You got bigger fish to fry. Again, the food desert, I have no sympathy. That's what the hood bought. I feel for the good people there that are stuck due to economics. But the food desert, oh, please, they don't have a place to shop. Then when you go someplace, you're profiled. I uh, shouldn't be surprised. You tore up your stuff. Shouldn't be surprised. The dude that was on the subway threatening people acting crazy. Look what happened with the uh, what ex-Marine guy in the BC. We tolerate that kind of behavior. And so that's a good example. And unfortunate with some of these hood boogers and some of the hood people go to other neighborhoods after you've torn yours up. Trust and believe when you go to other neighborhoods, try the very same thing, you might meet the same fate. You're not other other cultures. You just don't sit up here and just terrorize women and children. One lady said he's going to kill her daughter on the train. So other cultures, they don't just stand by and just why let him have his way today. No, you might catch those hands and look what happened. If he could have just calmed this behind down and shut up, but too stupid to do that. Why? In the hood, it's okay. We, we allow that. Well, he, you know, that that's just him and just, just he keep your head down. Other communities, they don't have that. You're not going to, you're not going to do that. They're going to check you real quick. Those men are taught to protect. So that right there, if he had shut his butt up and sit his tail down the train, he might still be alive today to do the next Michael Jackson move. Who's bad? A difference in cultures. Then it says, um, so you're not cool with the term I use African Americans, and you don't have to be Bonquifa, Bonetta. Well, well honey, who, who is uh, Bonet Neffa? It's Bonquifa, okay? I get maybe that's your name that you're using for you refer to as, but that's cool. It sounds kind of harsh, and I largely think you're being stereotypical. No, I'm being realistic. Bonquifa came and set her fat butt in that chair and tore it up. Bonquifa and her man came to the Airbnb and messed up a $2,000 duvet. Bonquifa and her man stole all the detergent like hood rats. So it's not racist if it's true. Like the fact that black people don't nobody love you. That's true. It's not racist. It's, it's true. You don't love you. Stereotypical? No, that's reality. That's reality. The man on the train acting up, talking out loud and crazy. That's his reality. Black folks being loud. Is that, that's not a stereotype. A lot of us are like that. So are rednecks. And harsh. That's the problem. We don't want to be harsh. And I'm being realistic. I don't, uh, I'm not here to call you and say, well, they shouldn't do that. No. Like I said, that when it kind of bunk queef, and I still stand by. Uh, look on look on the social media pages. That's what most businesses do. They check out your social media. They really do. I've had mine checked out. I've done business deals worth a lot of money, and they went over my social media. Yeah, they want to know. That's business. So we're operating, you and I obviously had different experiences, and that's okay. But about it being harsh, how about we stop? Yeah, I, I think uh, I that I, I can agree. We need to get harsh. Get harsh on black women having kids by these no good, non-providing non men, spineless men, dust buckets. 
But no, let's call that behavior. Look where it's gotten. How's it? How's it going in Chicago? Kids downtown acting like heathens. Or should I say they're acting unpleasantly? No, sometimes you need to know it's reality. And see, that's what the majority of society do when they see black people. They just do a little fake smile thinking, okay, I hope this Negro doesn't go crazy today or do anything dangerous. A fake smile. That's what they do. And hope when you move on. Someone like me comes along and says, hey, ladies, we, we got to stop all this. Care to see the poverty deed? You're going to see what's going to happen to you. A mini woman now is sitting up at the homeless shelter. A, the care of the seed of poverty D. If that's harsh, then you can call it harsh. But I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend with you like, well, that may not be a good. No, it's not a good idea. A mini man walking around right now wanting some quick money, and he tried to run a little street hustle. Now he's sitting up here, a uh, lint pockets, Larry. Well, now I want to get a job. Well, it's a little late. Now you should have had a job the first time. Now I want some quick money, quick money. Well, now you got some feeling somebody wants to hire you. Perpetual limp pocket Larry. So, yeah. So, it could be kind of harsh. And largely, uh, let's see. Lars, I think you're being stereotypical. No, I'm just being uh, obvious. You don't look at the videos on the news, the news clips. Oh my goodness, this black man, these black folks that broke in the store and stole stuff. Is that stereotypical? Girl, it's reality, sir, ma'am. It's reality. The stores that live in the black neighborhood is not because you're black. No, it's because you behave like that. It's not a stereotype. Why are the stores leaving? Because they keep on stealing. So we want to coddle that behavior and try to make like, oh no, it's not their fault. It's not the hood's fault. No, it is the hood's fault. It's the behavior. It's the culture. That's why Walmart, Target, Aldi, that's why they leave. And that's why the areas are redlined. And that is why they gentrify. Yeah. You have to understand the people there engaging in this behavior, they are participants. So don't just come saying, oh, they do doing gentrification. Where are we going to go? To gentrify, the land needs to be very cheap, by the way. When you have high crime and crazy people acting a fool, that's one way to do it. We don't want to talk about that. We want to sit back and play victim. They gentrify, thinking, where are we going to go? No one cares. If you think they do, go and ask them. Chicago, you think they care about you? They got $51 million for the illegal immigrants. You think they care about you? Go and ask them. Now we are per bomb rushing meetings. They're still going to spend the 51 million on the immigrants. Does that sound harsh to you? That's reality. That That's reality. I know what happened to that store owner in Chicago is tragic, and it is. But this city has had a problem for a long time. Okay, so a problem for a long time. Then when are they going to get it together? <laughs> a problem for a long time. The same problems keep on because you know what? We want to coddle that behavior. And blame when the police gonna get the guns off the street. Uh, it's the people, right, that do it. The guns just don't cop out the gun store and start popping. They don't load themselves up and just start shooting. It's about the people. But of course, we want to call that behavior and blame it on the guns. It's the people. It seems they've been in their own world as far as crime for a long time. I remember not too long ago when every other city crime rate was going down, Chicago was increasing. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why it was increasing. And while that was going on, how many women were still sitting up there carrying children by the seed of poverty D uh, by, by thugs, knowing that guess what? That's the way to get trapped. Why? Wow, the mamas got trapped. The crime was still increasing. Should have been on Operation Hashtag get the hell out of there. But somebody still, Bon Creeper still giving the seed of poverty deep. My man out of jail, I goes and gets pregnant, still does it. If the politicians really cared about you so much, they would break it down to you, like I'm telling you. But they know they're going to get in their feelings and you can't tell them nothing. So they let them just go on and, you know, pat them on the head and just keep getting their check. They know what the real problems are. I think they've given up on the group. That's my opinion. Because you can't tell them nothing. As my mother said, poor people don't listen. That's, maybe that's why they're poor. 
in some circumstances. People need to listen because sometimes you can get to a situation where you are poor, I think, and you can't get out. So sometimes you got to sacrifice for, for your children. Oh, yeah. you People people can say, you know, pull yourself up, uh, buy your boot shots. Well, my mom made that comment, what she's referring to. You can tell people certain things that might can help them. And she said, poor people don't listen. They're not going to listen. They're going to keep on doing what I, what I want to do. And that's why they're stuck. And my people don't have any sympathy for you. That's what she meant by that. But see, I'm afraid now that many are in a, are in a situation here. The resources are leaving town, their community. You, you need a place to work to earn some money. That's basic. Well, with high crime, companies are leaving. How the heck are you going to even accomplish that? But we don't want to be too harsh. You understand what I'm saying? So imagine being in a city where you have no way don't have, and that's why I think Chicago's headed. You know, because the businesses are leaving because of crime and just the crazy hood rat behavior. The middle class black folks don't moved out. Now I heard them say, "We might just go ahead and leave." What? They don't want to deal with the hood rat trash. You blame them? They've worked hard. They don't want their child just, you know, the hood coming to where they are. And that's what I've heard. It's like you got to be kidding me. They're like, we left Chicago and moved here, and now it's coming here. They're concerned about their black sons that go to school want to achieve. And then here comes a hood booger. Here comes Bonquifa's son. Here to cause trouble. Black middle class. So like they've given up. They don't want to deal with it. You think? And they're running. So you're going to find yourself uh, just, just stuck. If you don't even have resources where you can kind of keep a job going where someone can make some income. How are you going to go ahead and uh, try to escape poverty? And that's the problem. They don't see it. Too blind to see. Don't want to listen. Don't Too blind to see. Don't want to listen. Well, I get on welfare. <laughs> Good luck with that because, yeah, again, I had no idea. The vouchers, I've learned, have an expiration date. And people don't want their voucher. It's going to expire. You're going to be homeless. The hood don't want to listen. Don't want to listen. You don't have to. Be up under that bridge. And that's why when things start to happen, this is not sustainable. As someone said in the comment section, I totally agree. That's why the art of war, this group is too slow to learn. The hood booger people, they're too, they're too dumb. I'm just going to be honest with you. So then when you are displaced, something happened to you, no one's going to care. Because they're going to see this as, hey, you earned it. You contribute to your own demise. No one's going to care. No one's going to be marching for you. Help those black people. Help those black people. Save their home. Save their lives. It's not going to happen. Because the hood don't want to listen. It's not going to happen. He says, I remember not too long ago, when every other city's crime rate was going down, Chicago was still increasing. Gee, I wonder why. Because we call it that kind of behavior. They would have a murder rate of I can't believe this. Well, yeah, I can believe it. I'm just shocked. A murder rate of 700 cases a year sometimes. It's 365 days in a year. 700 cases. So this something, the black citizen of that city will have figured out. I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. I understand you and I respect your comment. Figure out, I think you have to care to figure it out. And it's obvious that most of them don't care. Who would keep on having children in that kind of situation? Who would keep on giving? You know the men are not providers as a collective. Who would keep, what kind of woman would keep on having children in that kind of situation? So the black citizens will have this, so this something so this is something the black citizens of that city will have figured out. That I kind of disagree because here's what I think. The ones that are doing, the one, well, also the ones that figured it out, they, are, they, they pretty much try to, try to move. They have resources. But the ones that are contributing, they don't care. And they're black citizens there too. They don't care. And that's why, I'm telling you, 
They're going to, and the next, I'm going to say, because this is happening so fast, the changes that are being made. I mean, you got the AI and the replacements. In about three years, not even five, this group is going to have a harsh reality. It's going to all unfold. Oh, you bet you. Look at Chicago now. 77% losing their homes, black people to what? To taxes? What the hell? You've got homeless in Chicago, the lady said, living on trains. Teenagers. Who ever heard of such? Where's the program to help you? They're concerned about the immigrants because you know why? Hate to tell you. The things that I'm saying, people will get mad. So here's what I think is happening. What I'm saying, they probably agree with. They don't want to say it because it's not PC. It is not politically correct. So what I think is happening instead, they look at you, see how you do, and they realize it's a lost cause. So say nothing. Do nothing. Invest in an immigrant. And as I said before, say it again. Hashtag starve them out. So worried about Bonquifa or the names? <laughs> in the BC, we do that. You that's the least of the problems. That about my what I said about Facebook? Yeah. That's business. That's business. I signed a contract, half a million dollars. Before I signed that contract, they were asking me so many questions. And you know what they asked me before I signed that contract? And this was probably a month before I even signed it. Jeez. They want to know about my social media. I knew what that was about. They want to say, okay, here's what she's presenting. Let's get her social media and kind of see what she's about. Yeah, I signed half a million dollar contract. They want to see what I'm about, what kind of person. Have at it. It's business. So that's why I said about the Facebook. Again, if many a black woman had sit up here and check, did a background check on this man and saw he had DV, he's not employed. He done beat up the last girlfriend. He been in jail before for drugs. He got a, a molestation charge. Gee, might be breathing today. So when you're in business, things work differently. So that's why I told a person that. What you need to go ahead and do is you need to um, check out the Facebook page first. And see who it is and you can go from there. Again, like Becky, on her first day, get pulled over. A drug, what's the cop pulling us over for? Oh, it's not a speeding ticket. First date. He got a drug charge. And he's going to jail. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Girl, I don't know. Uh, I guess drive his car home or drive it to his place. I don't know. They might think you are, oh, she ain't on it. You don't know who might come out. Kind of scary. So what do you do? I think I would have left his car there and got me a lift. I don't want to drive it. Because how do you know it might be some other drugs in the car? And in most cases, if it is, they'll impound it. Nice way to start the date. So, yeah. Looking up potential clients on Facebook. Exactly. That's what business people do. And that's why I'm addressing this issue so I can tell you. So we can agree to disagree, but there's a method behind the madness. A method behind the madness. What do you think a job interview is for? So, again, when I sign that contract, yeah. Check out my social media. You want to see the social media? Have at it. Why? I want to kind of get an idea about me. And now signing that contract. You never know. I watch how I move. Signing that contract. People keep your fingers crossed. It looks like I may be signing another contract. Hopefully a better contract. So yeah, like old girl not getting the job. Oh, uh, they checking your social media. Oh, maybe and she didn't know that. Maybe just kind of pause it a little bit. Do something. 
but you want to you can't complain about people and this system and all that and they're a part of it and then you want them to hire you so they can feed you and that's why they're popping i give you the job offers so want to bring that out uh just to say hey this is why this is why self-discrimination uh, i already said i profile a lot of you need to profile oh yeah even your friends Someone, why do you think somebody new into the group? You see these shows on TV, these reality shows, they want to kind of know what the person is about. They're just, oh, hey, girl, well, you look cute. Come on. No, I want to know what you're about. That's business. Date a man or woman that has wealth. Don't be surprised. They do a background check on you or they do a credit check on you. It's okay. That's part of the deal because you're going to be in their world. Especially a background check. They don't want to wake up and, oh, that oil pan was right there. And then they see you on camera trying to load up into the back of your car. I'm going to take this home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's business. And that's the thing about the people in the BC, Bonquifa, the one like that. That's how I see her, the one that had her body on the fruit. Uh, all the youth acting crazy in Chicago. You're running businesses out of the community that's the part that they're too stupid to see and this and it doesn't matter what your nationality is who this person is that's the part that they're too stupid to see it ain't like the hotel six we're gonna leave the light on for you like in chicago they're turning the light off and i'm afraid they're going to starve them out because they don't want to listen. Do what I want to do. We're going to start some work. You're not going to have jobs. And it's going to really get wild. I already hear now places doing the same thing. Somebody said to me, if you know this, I'm like, yep, same thing. All the black folks are gone. And it's just uh, whites and Hispanic people. We, bon Quifa doesn't want to listen. And I notice, I, I, you know, and I just speak my truth. I notice in customer service, one place I do business and they're calling and checking up on them. I look up, come in one day, it's a whole lot of Hispanic, but that's a whole lot. But I was saying like, okay, so we got one, five Hispanic people and they do have one who African-American. Where the rest of the black folks go? Gone. And they're young. And they cater to the customer. Child, they cater to the customer. You know how when you go into the uh, Gucci store or whatever your store is, Big Lots, whatever. But you know how you go into the Gucci store and you might be a customer that they know and they see you and smile. And they already know they're coming out. They go to the back and they come out with that little tray. Oh, you know, they know you like wine. And I'm going to give you water to go. That's how you know we do. Okay. Those kids in that business, doing this, they just know how to cater. And I thought the black one, because we got too much of an attitude. I ain't got to do all that now. Oh, it's the more that I can get you. Okay, is this okay for you? They know how to cater to the customer. The other ones weren't doing that. We got too much of an attitude. I ain't doing all that, and they're not going to hire you either. But see, we can't say that because the hood's going to get mad. So what is happening is these companies, they're not going to say to you, little T.T. Bonquifa, yeah, you need to be more engaging with the customer. You know, if the customer is just sitting and waiting, see if they need anything. Can you bring? They're not going to do all that to you. They're not. What they're going to do because they know how it's going to get. They know the attitude they're going to receive. So they just do nothing but get rid of you. I was in a Gucci store. A black man wasn't waiting on anybody. And he worked there. It was too. I said, "Oh my goodness!" He saw me, and uh, he 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 wouldn't even say, "How may I help you?" Nothing like that. Becky and Peter, they're working. They're they're making sales. Next thing you know, that they they're coming over. They're like, you know, "I'll be with you in just a moment." In the meantime, yes, give me you know glass of wine, all that. Next thing I know. Cause I, in the past, I shopped there a lot. Next thing I know, but then I get older. You're like, hey, you want you want to conserve your money. So the next thing I know, man, they got some, they got all they got probably oh we got about six bags on the counter, you know, uh, because I shopped there in the 
passed a lot, man, they'll bring out, oh my gosh, we got some new stuff in the back. Okay. So I was that kind of customer. Me, I've slowed down now, but I, you know, just to be honest, that's how I, I was. So they bring a lot of purses. I said, okay, you know what? They're like, oh, we got something new. I'm like, oh, it's not in the floor. No, this in the back. I'll be right back. And that's happened to me before. No big deal. My husband used to make a whole, whole lot of money and he still does well now, but still. So that's where I was. The black man just ignoring me. So then there are, she went to go get some other stuff to show me. And um, uh, I said, oh, sir, will you mind? You can go ahead and put these, put these back. He ignored me. Excuse me? Haven't had this problem with the white people in Gucci. He ignored me. It's like, oh, okay. So uh, Becky saw it. And she said, the customer said, put these back. So put these back. Th then he did it. He didn't make a sale. They did that day. Oh, yeah. Couple of G's, just saying. If I have like a, hey, like a really great, great month on something and every now and then treat myself, I have done that. Okay. So, so yeah. So, what, what does that tell you? Black people, especially on their own. Black people, especially on their own. That's how they are, the ignorance. So what's going to happen? They're not going to sit up here and tell you what to do. Well, you're just another black person. They're not going to do that. What they're doing is just removing you. And that's the easiest way to do it. Just, just get them out. Just removing you. So a place now, I noticed, I said, wow, they've gotten rid of, and I hate to say it, it's like you can see this difference in treatment but see we don't want to have those conversations because the hood want to get mad so that right there what people know they're going to get mad at attitudes guess they do just go ahead and just get rid of them and then nobody is hiring us gee you think i wonder why so it's things like that you try to tell your people i don't have a problem respecting anyone because i respect myself i respect myself i don't have a problem at all but see, you got an attitude and you're angry, disenfranchised, and sometimes ignorance. We can't do that. You'd be surprised. Having that kind of positive attitude, somebody might give you their card and change your world. But we can't do that. So, yeah, you, they're being squeezed out. Being squeezed out. And I said, wow, that, that's the sad thing. You can tell the difference in how the workers are communicating with the people. Can I get you anything? Okay, to be a few more moments. It's all professional. But see, we if, well, I ain't about that life. I don't want to be doing all of that. You don't have to. And that's why they're going to just sho shove you way to the back. They're getting rid of you. I'm going to tell you they're not. And then they're going to get too hyper, get too in their feelings. I'm going to get on Facebook side. They talk to me. So what they're doing, I hate to tell you, they're smarter than the hood booger. They're smarter than you. Black people with money. They're not going to get around a whole bunch of hood, hood rat people. They're going to be real quiet and try to make their way out. Because they know, uh-uh, they don't want to engage with you. It's not worth it. You've shown who you are. So that's what's happening now with these jobs. That is what's happening now with these jobs. That's what's happening now. And you're squeezed out. And you wonder why. So, yeah, it's too far gone. So worried about the names, but I'm that's the least of the problems. That checking out on Facebook, I suggest you do it again. Like I said, that happened to me when I signed a contract. Half a million dollars, I understand. I, I, I get it. They want to see what well, we find out about her. And they did. So it's things like that our people don't understand. You need to understand. So you're looking for a job. Maybe it's your social media. In case you didn't know, now you know. And I got to go. Simply said on YouTube, uh, the channel here, again, it's about those comments where we discuss some of the comments that are on the previous. And this one here I found very interesting. I really did. But I want to shed light onto you, a method to the madness, as to why when I'm making these statements, here's why. Looking on Facebook before doing business with them, honey companies do it all the time. All the time. So if you're in the job market, you may want to consider, hey, how's your Facebook? How's your social media? People do it all the time. They want to know who they're dealing with. Okay? So thank you so much for commenting here. Uh, who's this person? Adding up to 1,002. Oh, that's cute. Adding up to 1,002. I like that. So thanks for commenting. So I want to kind of go into detail as to why, okay? And I'm out.